examples. Here I have shown you the picture of a wall and the fruit. So if, if you are going to see a huge building with variety of designs, that huge building has started with this basic foundation, what we call as brick. Many such bricks are going to repeat itself in a different fashion to give you different designs. So we can say that atoms, they combine together to form molecules and this molecules in turn will combine to give you compounds which make up different forms of life and non-living things. Here also you can see the fruit, this fruit which is pomegranate is made up of many seeds. If you just look at this, each seed, it is of same size. Many such numerous uh, seeds together, they form this fruit. So if you're going to compare the elements by taking this, we can say the elements of the fruits are identical. They have same type of atoms. But when you compare this with a brick, they are of different elements and their atoms are alike. But these element and that element are different. What we understood from here, atoms of same element will be identical, whereas the atoms of different elements are not identical. Now let's know the structure of atom, how it looks like and what it is made up of. So there are various theory to explain the structure of an atom. The most accepted and simplified theory is the Bohr's model theory. And this Bohr's model theory is identical to that of solar system. And we know solar system has the sun in the center and all the planets are going to revolve around that. In a similar way, he has given the structure of atom in that sense where the atom has a central nucleus around this. There are various shells where electrons are going to revolve. Now let us know the center of an atom which we call as nucleus. It is made up of two components what we call as protons which are positively charged. Then the neutrons which are neutral. This together forms the mass of an object. And this mass is more in the central nucleus region compared to other part of the atom. Now whatever this Things which are revolving, these are electrons. They move in a definite orbit and they have a fixed energy levels. And they are negatively charged, hence making an atom overall neutral. Now let's know the few components and what information you can, you can derive from that. See now here, we have seen that where protons are present and this in turn will give an idea about the atomic number and this number is going to show what is a type of element and where it is present in periodic table how it has been arranged now if you know this proton we can also say that the number of electrons will also be equal to protons since an atom is electrically neutral by knowing number of protons and electrons we can calculate the number of neutrons this formula you can use to calculate the neutrons now why is an atom neutral because nature prefers balance for every positively charged there is a negative charge particle and this process is reversible also now here, by taking a specific example, we can explain the Bohr model for carbon element. This is the symbol, which is a calculator, and this is the name of the element given. The very first number which you see on the carbon above is the proton number, which indicates this is an atomic number having six protons. That means carbon should also have six electrons because overall it is neutral. Now how this six electrons are arranged in an atom for that you need to follow certain rules these are the rules so whatever you see the surround ring structures we call them as shells or orbits where the electrons revolve and each shell will have the maximum capacity that how many vacant seats are available to take the electrons first shell will have two this is the first shell the second shell is l which have maximum of eight electrons by looking at this we can place the electrons how you're going to place you're going to start up with the very first shell which is next to the nucleus 
after once this first shell fills you can move on to the next shell if this is not filled you cannot move to the next energy level now next let's know what this electron do and how they bring about change now most of the atoms we know there are many atoms and all these atoms they together interact and these interactions are because of the electrons so we can say the important part of an atom is the electron that two which electron valence electrons so now how this atoms they interact they interact by forming a bond now what is this bond the bond is nothing but the force of attraction that keeps the atoms together and this force of attraction we give a name as chemical bond why do they do behave like this what is that making them to behave we know that for all the elements of an atom if they have to be happy or stable they need to have eight electrons in the outermost shell if at all if any of the element does not satisfy that, that then they have to either share an electron lose an electron or give an electron so all these things happen to gain the stability they want to be more stable and happy just like their standard uh standard uh, you can see the other elements which are more inert or inactive like the noble gas elements now here if you take an example of this oxygen and beryllium you can see this this is the outermost shell the shell which is present in the second is outermost for this here also for oxygen this is the outermost shell the number of electrons that are present on the outermost shell or the valence electrons they are the most actively involving in the reaction to show the stability or unstability of an electron of an element and these electrons are of importance now let us know what type of bonding they will show we said they can attain the stability either by gaining losing or sharing so this first example will show you that the number of electrons in the valence shell in oxygen we got to know it is 6 the requirement is they have to have 8 electrons so oxygen is short of 2 electrons so how it can satisfy how it can become happily it can take one electron from each of the hydrogen that is it can share the electrons with hydrogen to become satisfied okay oxygen now when it is going to share it's going to get this eight electrons what about hydrogen hydrogen is not getting eight it is just filling the two that means hydrogen is an exception hydrogen is an exception here instead of octet rule it has to follow the duplet rule which helium is going to follow therefore if hydrogen has two electrons that is the valency will be satisfied and it becomes more stable so here we have taken one more example to show the ionic bond wherein if an atom has extra electron it can give or donate the electron for the needy and the chlorine is one less one short of eight electron therefore it's going to take this or accept the electron to become stable hence by transferring the electron these two elements become stable and the bond which is forming between them we call as electrovalent or electrostatic bond since this is going to result in charges sodium is going to lose one electron and gain positive charge chlorine is going to receive an one electron and gain a negative charge so next move on to what is a molecule how it is formed and what types of element can form a molecule now we can see here molecule is just a chemical combination of atoms they are held together by the uh, by a chemical bond same elements atoms can combine even the different element atoms can combine by a bond now how is a molecule different from a compound as two or more molecules can they can combine in a different fixed ratio to give you different compounds we have studied about this water we know it is made up of oxygen element and hydrogen element these are the two different elements they combine in a fixed ratio 
for every one molecule of oxygen there are two hydrogen atoms so this ratio is fixed and oxygen and hydrogen they are different they are gases and they are going to chemically combine to give you water which is liquid entirely a new substance so second example for a compound is sodium which is a solid uh, reacts with the chlorine which is a gas to give you entirely new substance which is salt the common salt sodium chloride now it's a time for getting the information what you have already learned to put in and know if this is an element atom or a molecule so these are the hints by looking at this three is the coefficient you can follow that it is the number of molecules in a substance the sub uh, subscript is going to show the number of atoms overall you just have to multiply the number of molecules in the individual atoms you are going to get the total amount of atoms in each case you can use this hint to calculate these number see this first formula is been done for you to find out the element you can say this calcium just is a single element plus carbon and oxygen all the three elements together they form one compound so we have put three the number of atoms in each case calcium is one atom then carbon is one and oxygen is one again they have one one atom when you're going to count in terms of molecules <clears throat> we can see that the total number of atoms in the molecules are five three of oxygen one of carbon and one of calcium likewise you can find out for the rest so now here again a small a tricky thing to find out whether it is a compound or a molecule just use the information just uh, before what we have learned about what is a compound and a molecule here we have uh, one is being done for you nitrogen dioxide which shows that it is involving different atoms of element they are going to combine in a fixed ratio likewise you find out for other whether it is an atom whether it is an atom bonded to a molecule or a compound or both <clears throat> 